Hi, my name is David Maldo, and welcome to the LDV Podcast. Yesterday, a friend of mine, a fourth grade teacher, reached out to me and asked me to walk her through the new Zoom security button. So we jumped on a call, and after going over the new security button, we talked about how she's using Zoom with her class, and together we came up with four tips for teachers. So let's start with the new button. I'm actually in a Zoom call right now. So if I wiggle my mouse around, the control should pop up. And there at the bottom of the screen, we see the new security button. Let's click it and take a look. So these are the settings that I would recommend. I'm gonna to try to make this video quick. So maybe pause it now, take a screenshot, and later put these settings in for yourself. But let's quickly go over them. Now the first thing, this is what the menu looks like when you're alone in the meeting. As soon as someone else joins, you'll see something else on this list. So let's do that now. Okay, so now we have the full menu and you can see the additional item is remove participants. If you click that, you get a list to the right of the screen of everyone in the meeting with a remove button next to each person. So you can quickly see who doesn't belong there and click to get rid of them. So let's go over the rest of the items on this menu. Starting from the bottom up, the first one is rename themselves. Now with Zoom, you can right click on your own face, your own picture, and it lets you rename yourself. That's handy if you have a typo when you first enter the meeting. But if I was a student, I'd be changing my name every two seconds just to make my friends laugh. Just disable this. If a student makes a mistake with their name, you can fix it for them. The next one is chat. Chat can actually be really helpful in a class, but I think it's kind of a privilege. Now I have a longer video, which I'll link below, which has advanced security settings, which makes sh make sure that students can't uh, pass each other notes. They can't do private messages. But you might wanna have chat enabled to let the whole group talk. But again, if they misbehave, you can always shut it down here. The next one is screen share. I would recommend keeping that off. Now keep in mind, these are for participants, so you can always do these things, but you really just want to be the only one who could screen share. Again, if I was a class clown, that's one of the tools I would use. If you want to allow a student, you can come down to this menu, click it to allow it. After they're done, unclick it. The next one is perhaps the most important one. Well, actually, it's the only one that's, that's clicked right now, and that's Enable Waiting Room. We're gonna go over how it works, but you need to have it enabled. That makes sure you control exactly who gets into your class. And it's a few extra clicks. It's gonna take a little bit to get used to, but after a meeting, a meeting or two, you won't think about it. And I'm sorry, but in today's day and age, we have to social distance, we have to wash our hands, and we have to enable our waiting rooms. And the last one is maybe the most powerful button, but really you're never going to use it and that is the lock meeting button now if your enable waiting room is is on no one can get in the meeting anyway but let's say one of your students accidentally posted the link to your room on Facebook and a bunch of troublemakers are just bombarding your waiting room and annoying you you could lock the meeting but again ideally we should never have to use that button so that's really all there is to the security button let's get into our four tips the first tip has to do with that waiting room I was telling you about. My tip is, again, wiggle your mouse to bring up your buttons, and you see this Manage Participants button. When you click that, a list will come up at the right of everyone in the meeting and everyone in your waiting room. Now, once class starts, you might want to click the button again and make that go away so you could have a nice full screen. But at least at the beginning of class, this is a nice way to just make sure you didn't leave someone in the waiting room or, or that you know exactly who's in the meeting. So with that, let's invite some participants and watch the waiting room fill up and see how this works. Okay, so it looks like our five students have gotten the email, they've gotten the link, and they're all in the waiting room. Students one, two, three, four, and five. And we can see exactly that we have five people that are waiting and that I'm the only one in the meeting so far. So let's let everyone in. Okay, so now we have everyone is in the meeting and we can see we have some controls over them. But again, I would suggest once we have our attendance, once we know that everyone's in, we click that manage participants button again so we have a nice full screen view. Now that brings us to tip two. Tip two is Brady Bunch view. If you again wiggle your mouse to bring up the controls, at the top right you'll see there's a button and it says speaker view and if you click it, it switches to gallery view you always want to have it on gallery view. Gallery view is what I call Brady Bunch view. The idea is this is what it's like teaching a class. You see all of your students' faces. Also, it take, make sure that there's no troublemakers. This is like teaching a class in person. But here's the trick. I would suggest to your students, or maybe insist that your students, be on speaker view. 
Speaker view shows the last person who is speaking, which should be you, usually. And if you're presenting, if you're teaching, they should see you full size. They shouldn't be distracted by seeing all of their other classmates. They should only be looking at you. So don't mention Brady Bunch view to them. Tell them to make sure they're on speaker view so they can see you. One of the great things about Brady Bunch view is that it enables tip three. My friend said she had a problem. One student was playing around with the virtual backgrounds too much and distracting everyone and wanted to know what she could do. I said, click on the student. If a student is making a goofy face, right click on their goofy face and you get a bunch of controls that can help you deal with them. So immediately you could see, you can mute them or unmute them. You can stop their video and then later let them restart their video if, if you want to. You can put them back in the waiting room, kind of like a timeout, I guess. And if things get really bad, you can kick them out of class. So tip one is manage your participants at the beginning of the meeting to make sure you let everyone in. Tip two is Brady Bunch view so you could watch all your students. Tip three, if they're being goofy, click on their goofy faces. And tip four, and I don't need to be in Zoom to tell you this, so let me get out here. Consider getting a second monitor. Now, ideally you want a good headset, a good microphone, a good webcam, but really if there's only one thing you can have, you want to get a second monitor. When I was helping my friend with this, she was really struggling because she only had one monitor and she was trying to position Zoom, her video conferencing, and she was trying to position her emails and her agenda and her, and her classwork. So if you have two monitors, you can have Zoom right in front of you, full screen, see all of your students, and on your second monitor, you can have your classwork. And when I told this to my friend, she said, well, I think we might have an extra computer. It's not better getting a second computer. If you have a, an old TV monitor, you might be able to use it. You can plug it into your laptop, and your laptop will just see it as a second monitor, and you could just drag windows from one to the next. So put your email on the right screen, put your students in front of you. It's, it's really worth looking into. It makes a huge difference. Okay, so that's everything you need to know about the new Zoom security button and four tips for teachers that I hope you'll find useful. So I got a voicemail from my teacher friend. Let's hear how her first class went. Best Zoom day ever. Not one glitch. Loved it. Awesome. And guess what? They were being silly on chat and I shut that down and then one kid was like how do we chat? I'm like oh well some people are being silly so we're not going to be chatting anymore today. Boosh. All right, sounds like it was a success. So ideally, my friend will be back in the classroom with her class soon. But until then, we all need to make the most of this. So I hope you found this helpful, and please subscribe to this channel for more work from home, learn from home content.